Hey guys, welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. I'm Matt. Today's episode is Mr. Maple News live on the scene. Uh, we're here in a parking lot in front of Firehouse Subs on the Spartanburg Highway to discuss what the heck is going on with this Japanese maple. Now, the tree behind me here you can see is a gorgeous Japanese maple, probably a Tamukiyama or something like that. You see that look you're looking for in a lace leaf Japanese maple. As we go over to this side, we have the exact same plant here, but what the heck is going on with this tree? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, I'm Tim, smash that like button. Guys, we're standing here with a Japanese maple that has a green Japanese maple coming out over top of a red lace leaf Japanese maple. What in the world is going on? Well, some people will often say, I've got an extra bonus plant here because I've got two different types on the same plant. And you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you remove this green part here. What'll end up happening is this green part that you see right here is gonna end up growing upright and taking more and more energy away from the lace leaf, the red part that this was selected for. And so instead of having this nice dwarf red weeping lace leaf here, this green will grow upwards to make a large green Japanese maple. And eventually it'll end up killing the red lace leaf down below. So if you see this green coming out on your red lace leaf Japanese maples, make sure to prune that off. This is something we see constantly, especially out there in these public plantings where the green root stock starts to come up. Make sure you get that removed as quickly as possible because you could have a beautiful red Japanese maple like the first one we checked out if this green was trimmed out back to the roots. All right, guys, so there's some shoots coming out down low here. I'd recommend getting in here with some pretty significant pruners, taking out all this green. As Tim mentioned, eventually the green tends to get more chlorophyll. It will become dominant and eventually it will likely kill out the red lace leaf. So you wanna make sure to remove all this. Uh, people sometimes will look at it and say, hey, it's a bonus, I've got two trees here. What a cool thing going on. Really all you have is a seedling that's overtaking your red lace leaf. And if you want an optimal looking tree, if you want a beautiful red weeping Japanese maple, you need to remove all this. So get in there, look at the root stock, look at where the whole tree is grafted. If it's grafted higher up, you may have root stock coming from any point below that graft. So the first step is identifying your graft union and then look at any growth coming out from below that. Typically it's gonna be this light green color. So it's gonna be easy to identify from the dark red. That's the, the lace leaf going on here. You wanna remove every bit of this. It's gonna make it a far more desirable tree. Uh, oftentimes people ask me, can I air layer this? Can I do something? You possibly could, but the best case scenario is just getting rid of it. This is just a seedling. They're a dime a dozen. You can find a seedling Japanese maple very easily. And so my suggestion would be to remove all this. That way it won't be stealing energy from the rest of it and you'll get the best looking lace leaf possible. Guys, I know this may seem overly obvious to a lot of you gardeners that are familiar with this, but to a lot of our new people and novelists, you know, this is something you wanna be looking out for. You wanna be removing that rootstock right away. You know, now this is a, a beautiful Japanese maple that doesn't have a rootstock issue here. And it's twice the size of the other one. So it's so much more established. It doesn't have that rootstock robbing energy from it and you're just gonna get a far more desirable plant when that's maintained. And this isn't something that you typically have to keep doing time and time again if you properly remove that rootstock. Once that rootstock has been removed, it often doesn't keep coming back. If you remove that rootstock all the way back to where it comes to the trunk of the tree, you typically don't have that come right back very soon. If you leave branches on that, it's gonna keep coming back time and time again. So make sure you remove all that rootstock and you get a beautiful red lace leaf like you see here behind us. It makes such a more beautiful tree out in the landscape. And it's a tree that's exactly why you planted it. I mean, the other one's gonna be exact opposite of what you planted it for. This one is a small, low growing uh, lace leaf Japanese maple. The other will eventually turn into a large tree. So keep that in mind. This is what you planted it for. And that's really what, why you need this tree in your landscape. So it may seem more desirable in the short term, but trust the skies, it's better to remove that rootstock because it eventually will kill out the more favorable lace leaf maple. I hope this has been informative to you guys. If we've earned it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share on our channel. Uh, you can ring that bell and get notified. We had daily gardening content here on the Mr. Maple Show. And guys, make sure you shop us on mrmaple.com. We'd really appreciate it. We put out a lot of these gardening tip videos on our channel. So if you're new to gardening with Japanese maples or you're a seasoned gardener, so make sure you subscribe to our channel because we put out all different levels of gardening engaged videos that you'll really enjoy. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.